In the 19th century, like most of the country, Ashland County students were being educated in one-room schoolhouses known as common schools. Curriculum was focused on the three R's, reading, writing, and arithmetic. All students, regardless of age or grade level, learned in the same classroom from a single teacher which created its own challenges. The teacher was often an unmarried woman, but that wasn't always the case. There were a handful of male teachers spread across the county throughout the years. Common schools served a similar function as elementary schools do today. Students attended first through eighth grade. Anyone who wanted advanced education could attend select schools, which were private schools that cost money but were meant to prepare a student for college. Rather than walking sometimes more than a mile to school, students rode the kid wagon, which operated in a similar fashion as buses do today. In 1913, Ohio repealed the Boxwell-Patterson Law, which had allowed anyone who passed a test to teach regardless of age or training. This was monumental for Ohio's public education system because it increased the standard of qualified teachers. In response, Montgomery Township Board of Education hired Dr. L. L. Garber as part-time superintendent. He added industrial training, agricultural training, and home economics to the curriculum for the 1913-1914 school year. At the time, there were 11 one-room schools in Montgomery Township. Each school housed grades 1 through 8, each with 10 to 29 students for a total of 225 students in Montgomery Township. Dr. Garber made frequent visits to each of the district schools throughout the year. Montgomery Township was divided into 11 district schools. The first was Riddle School, located on Township Road 593. Riddle School saw four different buildings throughout its history. The original log structure was built in 1834 on Michael Riddle's farm, from where it gets its name. This structure was later replaced by a new building in 1850, 1864, and 1884. Enrollment during the 1913-14 school year was 26. Proudfoot School, located on Cleveland Road, served District 2. Proudfoot School was built in 1873, making it much newer than the other township schools. Like most one-room schools of the day, it was named for the people who owned the land on which it was built. Proudfoot saw 15 to 30 students on average throughout its history with its enrollment recorded at 17 during the 1913-1914 school year. The first school building in District 3 was a log house built in 1847 on William Roseberry's farm for which the school was named. Mary Sheets was the first teacher. She earned 50 cents per day. In 1850, a new building replaced the original Roseberry schoolhouse on Middle Rousberg Road. It was built just east of the original structure. A third and final building was constructed in 1886, known as Addisonian Hall, in reference to the Addisonian Literary Society, which were known for their literary work. Enrollment in the 1913-14 school year averaged between 14 and 18. Located on Route 250 East was District 4's Old 16 School that served students aged 7 to 21. Among its most notable students were Thomas, Gertrude, and Nellie Thornburg, and Mary Freer. Thomas Thornburg is well known around the museum for his collection of insects and natural history. Mary Freer is well respected in Ashland for her donation of the children's home on Center Street. Enrollment during the 1913-14 school year was 17. A log building was constructed on John Fraunfelter's farm on Worcester Road, known as Fraunfelter School. This structure burned in 1845 and was replaced by one of the largest frame buildings in the district. At its start, Fraunfelter School served 120 students. The second building burned in 1866 and was replaced by a new structure built closer to the center of the district. In order to make space for a house on the current lot, a fourth and final building was constructed to the southeast on J.L. DeVore's farm. District 5 was particularly known for its excellent teachers throughout its history, which included future California Congressman John Yule and William Callahan, 
who was regarded as one of the best educators in the state at the time. Famous students include the Studebaker brothers, who are known for their production of vehicles in South Bend, Indiana, Professor Elias Fraunfeldt, future superintendent of Akron Public Schools, and the Honorable F.M. Plank, who served as superintendent of Lodi Schools and as a Medina County representative in the Ohio General Assembly. 1913-1914 enrollment was recorded at 20. Sheridan School was located on the corner of Township Road 1600 and 655. Established in 1852, the school was named for Jacob Sheridan, who lived across the street. Enrollment at its onset was 70 students. A new District 6 building was constructed in 1855. Notable students include Dr. Gilbert Hess and J.L. Clark, who would go on to found Hess and Clark, famous for the manufacture of animal pharmaceuticals and one of Ashland's most prominent industries. Sheridan School had 29 students enrolled during the 1913-14 school year. Around 1813, Michael Thomas donated land on Ashland County Road 995 for the building of a school. The first structure was a 20-foot by 25-foot log building named Thomas School in his honor. The original structure was replaced by three different buildings throughout history. The fourth and final building was constructed in 1889. Thomas's children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren all attended the District 7 school. Enrollment during the 1913-14 school year was just 10 students. Jacob Krauss donated an acre of land on Township Road 1102 for the construction of a school. Krauss School was first opened inside a log house for the 1815-1816 school year. The building was subsequently replaced by a frame schoolhouse and later a brick building. Former Secretary of the Insect Department in Washington, D.C., Frank Samanton, was a student of Krauss School. District 8 saw one of the largest enrollments during the 1913-14 school year at 23. Located between Ohio 511 and U.S. 250 West was the District 9 school. The first structure was built in 1842 on William Schittler's farm and served 50 to 60 students on average. It was replaced by a second structure just west of the original building. A third structure was built on Mr. Circle's land known as Circle School. The land the school sat on was later sold and the name of the school was changed to Snook's School after John Snook, who was actively involved with Sunday School. A fourth building was constructed in 1879. The 1913-14 enrollment was 20 students. In 1837, a log schoolhouse was built in Frederick Shearer's Woods, called Shearer's District No. 7. In 1847, it was replaced by a new building, constructed a half mile away known as Bright's District No. 10, named for Mr. Bright, who lived on the farm nearby. The Bright building was located on County Road 1600 between Route 60 and County Road 1775. Attendance ranged from 70 to 80 students, many of which were between the ages of 18 and 20. In 1854, a larger frame building was constructed, it was replaced by a brick structure in 1887. Enrollment in 1913 1914 was 24 students. In 1878, a brick structure called Number 11 was built. The name was later changed to England Station School because of the LA and S railway that ran through the area. Although it shrunk over time, England Station was one of the largest schools in the district. Its enrollment was 20 in the 1913-1914 school year. The 1916 Ashland County School Directory records 59 one-room schoolhouses across the county, including the areas of Hayesville, Loudonville, Jeromesville, Savannah, and Ashland. By this time, schools were divided into two divisions with their own superintendents that were overseen by a county superintendent. 
By 1916, most one-room schoolhouses were made of brick in a similar style of architecture. The school year was shorter than it is today because the boys were needed on the farm to help with planting in the spring and harvesting in the fall. The room featured a teacher's desk that was elevated on a platform and a stove in either the middle or back of the room that provided heat. The teacher was responsible for keeping the fire going while the boys were responsible for fetching the firewood. They also fetched water from the well for use throughout the day. Parents were sometimes asked to supply fuel for the fireplace. Boys spent much of their recess clearing trees and brush from the surrounding area to make way for a playground. Many schools had a shed out back for the teacher's horse and buggy and separate boys and girls outhouses. A push to supply each school with an organ began in 1910. Organs could be purchased from Sears and Roebuck for between $12 and $25 each. Schools often held pie socials to raise money for their organ. By the 1930s, most one-room schoolhouses in Ashland County had closed and students were consolidated into the public elementary schools that had been constructed across the county. The old one-room schoolhouses were auctioned off on the steps of the courthouse. Most have since been demolished, but a few still remain as homes, shops, and commerce centers. While the function of schools remains the same, everything from the operation and curriculum to size and capacity has changed. Thank you for listening. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to continue learning more about Ashland County's history. As always, we invite you to come be a part of history at the Ashland County Historical Society.